you're watching America's Forum on Newsmax TV, and voila, here I am. <laughs> And just as I appeared here at this desk, uh, my friend John Bogman is about to appear with our headlines now, Newsmax Now news coverage. John? That was some TV magic, J.D. Pretty cool to see yeah. you there. That's right. Like magic. Uh, moving on, we'll take a look, check in at the Boston Marathon as the race continues throughout the day. We'll take a live look uh, at the Boston Marathon from the live stream provided to us from the Boston Athletic Association. You can see the runners there on the course, and you see some security officials on bikes there in the back room. Of course, the background, of course, security increased during the route this year, on the route during the race, but authorities say they've tried not to make things too overwhelming for the runners. Uh, we've heard reports early on from folks saying that things were great. Everybody was in a great uh, you know, sense of spirit about the race today. The chants of Boston Strong have been uh, coming early and often throughout the race, and I know it's a, a hard day for those folks uh, physically and emotionally as well, but everything seems to be going on just fine, so that's great to see. We'll keep checking in with the marathon as that race continues uh, today. Meanwhile, in Rome, folks at the Vatican are getting ready for a historic weekend after another historic weekend. That was Easter, this one coming this Sunday. On Sunday, Pope Francis will bestow sainthood on two of his much beloved pr uh, predecessors, John Paul II and John the 23rd. John Paul is celebrated as a pontiff who helped bring down communism and inspired a new generations of Catholics to join the church. And Pope John the 23rd is remembered for launching the reforms in the Second Vatican Council. He helped modernize the church, of course, back in the 14th century. Meanwhile, a 16-year-old boy is lucky to be alive after stealing a ride on a passenger jet. And this is the kid right here on a stretcher. He hopped a fence at the San Jose, California airport, then hit in the wheel well of a jet before it uh, took off. Five hours later, the plane landed in Hawaii. The team somehow survived despite frigid temperatures at 38,000 feet and a lack of oxygen. He is expected to be okay, but the stowaway, of course, has raised major security concerns at the San Jose airport because he was able to board without a ticket. In heaven, this little girl came up to me. She told me she died in your tummy. Well, another big weekend for the faith-based films at the box office. You're seeing Heaven is for Real right here. It raked in over $21 million this Easter weekend, and now Hollywood has a fourth religious-themed box office hit this year. The movie stars Greg Kinnear. It finished third place behind Captain America and the new animated flick Rio 2. But Heaven for, uh, Heaven for Real was made on a budget of just $12 million, a fraction of those other box office hits. Other religious movies that have been popular this year include Noah, Son of God, and God's Not Dead. They've all made the domestic top 20 as long along with heaven is for real so good stuff there for the faith-based films at the I box office. I've already heard from Miss Mary for date night tomorrow night it's a screening of heaven is for real. Miss Mary being JD's wife. That's the exactly Uninitiated correct. at home and I know it's going to be a good one I can't wait to get the review from you. Well I'll be happy to offer that here and right now it is time to do some talking from film to books. A gentleman whose work I became familiar with Two decades ago when I ran for the Congress of the United States, he penned the book entitled The Death of Common Sense. He joins us now to talk about his new book. He is Philip K. Howard, and the title of his new work is The Rule of Nobody. Philip, we welcome you to America's Forum. Thanks so much for spending some time with us today. Nice to be with you. Now, Philip, your book is arguing that, that federal, state, and local laws and regulations have stripped both parties in Washington of common sense and judgment. In your mind, is there one recent glaring example of this? Oh, there are examples every, every single week. I mean, the Affordable Care Act with 2,700 pages of statutes and 7,000 pages of rules, you know, or seven feet of rules, I'm sorry, more than 7,000 pages, the, uh, is, is one example. It's this idea that we can write enough words that will make everything work properly instead of letting people use their judgment. And so we've been writing all these rules and regulations now for decades, and we never, ever clean them out. So at this point, America is ranked 20th in the world in ease of starting a business because there's so many permits required to do even the simplest things. So the bottom line is on this, and only a, a couple of seconds left here, we need sunset provisions and laws. We need to curtail the powers, the powers of, the, uh, of the bureaucracy. So that's, that's vitally important. Philip Howard, we're, we're going to join you later to discuss this more in depth. For now, we thank you for that brief synopsis on your new book, The Rule of Nobody. Thanks very much to author yeah, Philip thanks, Howard. Thanks for having me.
take good care and we'll visit about it again, I promise. When we come back, more bodies are being pulled from that overturned ferry off the coast of South Korea. We will have the latest after the break. But first, here's today's America's Moment, celebrating the life of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. January 15, 1929, was a chilly day in Atlanta, Georgia, when a family gathered to welcome into this world a new life, and with it, a new hope for America. Two years after his birth, his father, Michael King, changed his name to Martin Luther King, and then changed his son's name to Martin Luther King, Jr. Throughout his 39 years, he instilled in Americans a new spirit of justice and freedom based on equality instead of status, and character instead of race. He waged a nonviolent war on racial segregation with appearances that radiated with an energy that transcended all races, all faiths, and people of all ages with words that still resonate today. I may not get that with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. He spoke to us of his dreams and his beliefs that justice too long delayed is justice denied. You're watching An American Moment on Newsmax TV.